I'm Jerry Tuscan. I'm a plant geneticist and I work at uh, Oak Ridge National Lab and have an appointment at the U.S. Department of Energy's Joint Genome Institute. I'm uh, one of the co-leads on the eucalyptus genome which has recently been sequenced and assembled. We were interested in sequencing the eucalyptus genome because it's the fastest growing tree species in the world and as a result it's used for pulp and paper, dimensional lumber, and is currently being evaluated as a biofuels feedstock. Trees in general represent the largest terrestrial sink of carbon on the face of the planet. A perennial plant like a eucalyptus tree not only stores carbon above ground, but stores carbon in its root systems in chemical forms that may reside there long after the tree has been removed. So from the perspective of carbon balance and carbon cycling within the global context of climate change, trees play a very important role in sequestering carbon. The JGI is the world's leader in sequencing and analyzing plant genomes. We've tried to decide which plant genomes to bring into the program based on their relevance to DOE emissions of bioenergy, carbon sequestration, and global climate change. Eucalyptus sits at a phylogenetic position in the tree of life that allows us to compare alternate species, looking at particular traits such as growth rate or biofuels production. We're able to use sequenced genomes to tease apart which genes control these favorable traits. So one thing that the eucalyptus genome revealed was that, there, that eucalyptus contains a large number of genes, the most reported to date, for terpene synthase. Terpenes are anti-pest or antimicrobial compounds that the tree uses to ward off bacterial or fungal attacks. These genes actually give eucalyptus its characteristic aroma. There are over 700 eucalyptus species worldwide, and among those there's a wide variety of terpenes that are produced. They're used for medicinal purposes, cosmetics, but from a biofuels point of view, they can be substituted catalytically for jet fuel. By having the library of genes that control these terpenes, we're able to dissect which particular genes control or produce specific terpenes, modify chemistry in the leaves, and increase the potential of eucalyptus as an alternative feedstock for jet fuel.